Morning, everybody. Oh, that's loud. Um, I'm Paul Price, founder of Top Dog Studios. Uh, firstly, I just want to say a massive thank you to John and the team here. The venue is incredible. I've not had much time to explore it yet. Uh, we've got a booth in the corner of the business district. Um, but yeah, they've done an amazing job. So thank you, guys. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to be talking about NFTs worth millions of dollars are disappearing and why it's a problem. If the clicker works. Nope. <laughs> Technical issues. I don't think that's my slide. Yes, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> there we go, thank you. Um, so what is an NFT? If you think about it, um, it's essentially a receipt on the blockchain, right? You purchase a digital collectible, and in return you're getting sort of the transaction is the receipt to say you purchased that collectible and that you own that collectible. Now, the actual truth is that you're purchasing a link. You might have heard this before. So when you're purchasing a digital collectible, you're purchasing a piece of metadata, essentially. And then that metadata is hosted on the internet. So it could be on Google Cloud, on Amazon. It could be anywhere. It could be on Facebook, wherever. Essentially, you're purchasing a link to a picture or to some sort of other digital collectible, right? And this is sort of what a typical NFT would look like behind the scenes. Um, now, the problem is that those NFTs, because they're linked, because they're on the internet, they can turn into very expensive 404 pages. So if a team, if an NFT project or a company stops paying their server costs or their, their sort of billing, then essentially it will turn into a 404 page. And this is happening, and I'll, I'll come back to this in a second. Um, but yeah. If you can imagine you purchase a digital collectible for $100, $1,000, $100,000, $100, essentially at any point it can turn into a very, very expensive 404 not found page. Um, you're probably thinking if you're familiar with NFTs, there's solutions like that to solve the problem that already exists. Um, IPFS, Fireweave, Filecoin, Arweave. Um, these are sort of decentralized solutions to store files, to store practically anything. Well, the problem with IPFS especially is there's no incentive layer. So there's no incentive for the people hosting these nodes or these servers, hosting your files, hosting your NFTs, your digital collectibles. There's no incentive for them to keep on doing it. Um, essentially, server costs money. Like, you know, you've got to pay an Amazon bill. You've got to pay a Google Cloud bill. That costs money at the end of the day. Um, so we need some sort of incentive layer. Filecoin and Arweave, is anybody familiar with those? They're sort of trying to fix the problem with, with tokenization, which is good. Um, and it's sort of a step in the right direction. Um, so the University of California did a study last year, and they sort of captured all NFTs, all digital collectibles that have been minted up to that point. And they were over a, for, I think it was an eight-week period, sort of checking if those NFTs that people have purchased are still active and still sort of live. You can see on the sort of left, these are IPFS links. So the green are still active. The red are now disappearing. So there's about 4% of all NFTs or digital collectibles hosted on IPFS have disappeared within just a two-month period. But more alarmingly, if you look onto the right side, if you are not hosting your NFTs on IPFS, then more than half of them are disappearing, which is just absolutely crazy. Um, thankfully, a lot of people are sort of storing their NFTs on IPFS uh, more and more, but still, it's not it's not an ideal solution. Um, I don't know if anybody, anybody does anybody know Cyber Brokers, the NFT collection. Um, they recent well last year now stored their um, art collection entirely on chain. Now the blockchain isn't very good for storing data or storing art or images. It's quite expensive to do so, but they did that last year and it cost them around two hundred and forty thousand dollars just to put their art on chain. So it's not really a, a solution either. Um, 
so yeah, this is the sort of sum of the amount that has disappeared since April last year. So $160 million worth of NFTs are disappearing um, essentially over every, every 12 months. I think that's increased now as well, that study was last year, which is just insane. Monetary sort of value aside, it's essentially people, you know, people have created art, it's creative expression, it's human expression that's been lost. Whether it is a monkey JPEG or a piece of abstract art, whatever it may be, it, that file is essentially being lost forever. Um, so if you think about when you purchase anything else, so if you purchase a car, if you purchase a laptop, whatever it may be, you sort of ask questions about that product, right? If you're buying a 10 grand car, you want to know when was it last serviced, when did the tires need changing, all that kind of stuff. If you're buying a laptop, do you want a warranty? And I think we should ask, be asking those questions about NFTs and our digital collectibles as well. So where is that NFT stored? How, lo how sort of safe is the storage medium and how long is it going to be stored for? Six months, a year, two years? We sort of need that, um, I guess, warranty on NFTs. Does anybody know what this is? Any space nerds in, the, in here? Yeah? <laughs> so this is the golden records that is on Voyager 1 and 2 spacecrafts. Um, I think they're like 70 billion miles away now in intergalactic space. And these are really, really cool. They're really special. So they contain all of our sort of most important human, I guess, knowledge. So we've got the human genomes on there. We've got music on there. We've got all sorts of sort of cultural, significant human information stored on these disks that are now hurtling through space. And the idea is that some intelligent life forms maybe in the future are going to find these and understand what life was like on Earth. So we sort of took this concept and we sort of created what we call the non-fungible vault. Um, and it's pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to show you exactly what it is. But essentially, it's, um, has anybody heard of the Arctic World Archive? It's like a deep storage facility in um, northern Norway, in Svalbard. It's actually in the, um, the Arctic. Like, it's in the middle of nowhere. So this picture on the, on the right is looking out from there. Uh, and deep below the permafrost, so thousands of meters below there in a decommissioned coal mine, there's this special storage facility. And it stores all sorts of things from um, the manuscripts of the Vatican. It stores um, scientific history from the ESA and NASA and all sorts of just really important cultural significant information. And what we did is we partnered with AWA and we have a, a special vault inside their vault, which is protecting NFTs. So we have... Um, essentially took all our clients' NFTs, we put them onto this special film at the bottom right here, and it sort of looks like a QR code. Um, it's called Silver Halide Film, and the idea is that that film can be preserved for a thousand years, and it's stored in a special container, in a special bag, and then it's stored in this facility. Um, yeah, and it's really, really quite special. The, the idea is that this is deep under the permafrost, so no environmental changes are gonna affect this sort of bunker. Um, and it's going to outlive everybody sat here right now, and it's a thousand-year guarantee of having your art and your files in there. Um, so these are some of the sort of clients and arts that we're preserving in there. I'm a good friend of Trevor. I know he's here today. I don't think he's in, in the audience. Um, but Trevor and Violet, we've got their work in there, and Boss Beauties, Phil Ellis, Buck Render. Um, they're sort of all partnered with us, and we're storing all of their art in this facility. Um, I could qu quickly show you a video, sort of a short documentary, but it's really cool. I've got no audio. But yeah, there's um, essentially a, a 40 minute documentary which, which sort of goes into and explains you know, why we're doing this, and it's essentially because art is, like I said earlier, you know, it's, it's human expression, whether it is an NFT or a physical piece of art, it doesn't really matter. Humans have created that art and we really think it's worth preserving that. And that's what we're doing in, in the non-fungible vault. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, we are Top Dog Studios. We've got Jakob on my team here as well. Uh, we've got Pete here as well. Um, we're actually, we've got, an on, we've got a booth called On3, which is another one of our products. So if you guys swing by and have any sort of questions I'll, or have questions now, I'll, I'll be glad to take them. Sure. I'll give you this one. Hello. Um, 
since the NFTs are tied to uh, your eye, how is, it, how is it the connection between this product and the URI of the N N NFTs? How, how, is it, how is the link on that? Yeah, great question. Because, yeah, um, so we essentially took all of the art, so the, the files, digital collectibles, whatever they may, may be, and we also took a copy of the full Ethereum blockchain. So every single block since Epoch, we took a copy of that. So we have all of the transaction history, all of the owners. So if you have an NFT by any of these collections, it's, it's going to be stored in there, along with all of the transaction history from the blockchain. So who minted it, all the owner information, essentially everything. So the idea is that we can reconstruct the entire Ethereum blockchain using essentially what's stored on this film. Yeah, so these uh, clients essentially paid us, um, and some of the people came on a trip with us, and we sort of had a big event, and yeah. Um, but we're still welcoming more, more collections to, to join. We hopefully have another trip planned this year, which we postponed, but maybe later in the year we can go again and, and do another deposit. Thank you.